Hello and welcome to the Tice Trading YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to start looking at how to code in NinjaTrader. NinjaTrader makes it incredibly easy to create your own indicators and tools. All you need is a basic understanding of pretty much any coding language and you'll be able to get started. In this video, we're going to build an indicator that'll tell us how many bars are on our chart. This is a tool that I use regularly when debugging my own personal projects. Throughout the process, we'll learn how to draw text in our charts, how to pull data from the charts in real time, as well as how to build a user interface for our indicators. We're going to start out by opening up NinjaTrader. From here, we're going to go New, and then we're going to go NinjaScript Editor. A window like this will pop up. So we're going to make a new indicator. You're just going to right click on indicators and hit new indicator. And then all we're going to do is just go to general, change the name to whatever you want. In this case, we'll call it bar counter, and then whatever description you want. We're just going to say counts bars. You can go through and add more stuff in here. Uh, you can even create your own parameters and line plots and stuff like that, all without coding. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to do it on your own in C Sharp code. So then we're going to click Generate. And here is our, uh, our indicator. Obviously, it doesn't do anything yet, right? But um, this is all code that NinjaTrader will generate automatically. Um, but from here, we're going to compile because we're not going to use the NinjaScript editor just because it doesn't look very nice. It's kind of hard to keep track of things. So we're just going to compile it and save everything. And now that that's done compiling, we're going to click this button up here. If you haven't yet, you should download Visual Studio. Uh, it connects directly to your NinjaTrader uh, or to NinjaScript. So you'll be able to debug everything uh, through Visual Studio. It's a much better system, highly recommend. And it's pretty easy to get set up. And now you'll be able to go down to the bottom of your indicators and you'll be able to find that new indicator that we built. We got bar counter counts bars. So now I'm gonna to explain to you more or less what we're looking at here. At the top, we have our using declarations. It just gives you all of them as a default. Um, you can delete the ones that you know you're not going to need, or you can leave them all there. It's really up to you. Um, as this is an indicator, it obviously inherits the base class indicator. On state change is complicated. Um, to a certain extent. This stuff that we're looking at here is relatively easy and I'll explain it in just a second, but it can get really complicated. But basically, there are states that an indicator will run through, such as um, historical, where the state.historical, it's running through all of the historical data. So for whatever reason, you want your indicator to behave a little bit differently during that state, you can adjust the settings in here. Um, we're not gonna get too deep into this because that's well that's just going to be a topic for another video and like I said it's a little bit complicated. Um, as far as state.set defaults goes this is a great area where if you have default um, global variables in your indicator you can set the values in here and we'll go over that as part of this tutorial and then set on state uh, dot configure um, this is just a good place if you have like uh, some indicators from some other indicators that you want to load into this one where you want to pull data from them and stuff like that. Uh, there's also state.data loaded and other things as well. Um, but we're not going to have to, we're not going to use this on this indicator. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. The only thing that you're going to want to change in here or that you really have to change is this is overlay false. You're going to change this to true for this indicator. What this essentially means is when you're plotting something on the indicator, it can either plot as a graph at the bottom of the chart. So you'll see like a chart, a uh, little graph right here down in this section, 
or it can plot directly onto the chart itself. So if we're talking something like an SMA line, I can show you here. If we just go, well, let's show, I'll show you ATR. So if we go ATR and we apply this, you can see it creates a plot down here. So this is not an overlay. This would be overlay equals false, right? But now if we have an SMA line, you can see this overlay equals true because it's plotted directly onto the chart itself. So that's what that function right there does. And then calculate is another important one and I'll go over that with you right now. Calculate is when you're gonna want the method on bar update to run. So in this case, for this indicator, as of right now, we're gonna want it to run on bar close. So every time a bar finishes or a new bar starts, then it'll run this method right here. And this is where we're gonna put most of our logic, not directly in the method, but in this general format. Um, so any like complex calculations you wanna make, stuff like that, that all comes in here. So we're gonna start out by creating our user interface. Right, so if, for this indicator, we want our users to be able to switch between their colors, the colors that we're gonna plot on them. So if you wanted to change like the line color, so we're gonna have that be an option in here. And then we're also gonna change whether you want to count the total number of bars or the number of bars since the most recent one. And you'll kind of see what that looks like um, later on when we actually plot it. But what, what is the user interface gonna look like? How do we code that? So what we're gonna, so what we're putting in here is a NinjaScript property. So we're gonna type NinjaScript property. You can see it pops up right away. And then we're gonna set the display for this property. Name is gonna be equal to, this one we'll call it bars ago count. You can see all the different parameters you can put in here. And then we're gonna set a group name for it and I'll show you what this does in a little bit. Um, but basically this is gonna group a whole bunch of our parameters together. It's gonna set our parameters into specific groups. So if we have a lot of parameters, we can kind of organize them a little bit, make it easier to read. And then order, we're gonna set this one to one. Oh, don't need an answer. So that's where we're at so far. Then the variable itself is going to be a boolean and we'll just call it ba check. And then actually we're going to do our uh, get and set. So that's going to be the first indicator, or the that's so that's going to be the first parameter in our user interface. So then we're just going to copy that and make another one. But this one we're going to call total bars count. This this name right here, by the way, this is the name that's going to pop up on our user interface, and we'll call this TB check. And then this is going to be order number two and we're gonna leave it in the group parameters. So next we're gonna create another one. So we'll copy and paste. We're gonna add something here. We're gonna add XML ignore. And this is gonna be a brush. A brush is basically gonna be a color. And so we're gonna call this uh, be a brush. And then we'll give it the name uh, bars ago. But we're going to change the group to be text color. And same thing, this will be one. 
and we'll oh, copy that and paste. And then we'll change this to total bars. We'll leave it in the same group, change the order to two, and then change this to TV brush. And so that's where we're at so far. So now we have all of the variables for our user interface. But I want to set the specific order that these parameters are actually placed in for like I don't like I don't want text color. I don't want this group of parameters to come in before this group of parameters in our user interface. So I'm just going to set up here the order that I want them to be in. So we'll do category order. And then here you just gotta type in the string. And then where you want it to show up. And this is gonna be the first one. And then we're gonna just do the same thing, copy and paste. And then text color. And that's gonna be the second one. Okay. So now we need to actually set the default values for these, because as it stands right now. If the person were to open up this indicator, well, you know, well, let me just show you. Let me show you. So I'm going to save. And this is basically a compiling. You'll hear a ding in a second when it's done. All right, so let me show you. Just remove these indicators. And bar counter. Here is our user interface. So I can check which one I want, and I can select any color that I want, but there's no defaults. So that means the user would have to come in and select all this stuff manually every time they want to add it to their chart. And that's kind of tedious and annoying, especially if you're building this indicator for yourself and you already know what values you're generally going to want to use. You might as well just set them for yourself so you, uh, as a default so you never have to set them again. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to come into here and we're going to go state equals set defaults. So in here is where we're going to set our default values. So our TB check, we're going to set that one to true. And then our BA check, we're going to set that to false. Our TB brush, we're going to set that so it's brushes dot let's do dark orange something that's easy to see and then ba brush we're going to set that to brushes dot red and this will set our default so now you'll see I'll compile that and then I'll open up the indicator And you can see it saved our defaults. And now obviously it's not, our indicator still isn't really doing anything, so nothing's gonna plot or show up, but we have our, uni our user interface uh, more or less finished at this point. So now we're gonna go on to create our methods. So we're going to call one of these methods total bars plot. And then we're going to call this other one bars a go plot. So we'll start with total bars because that one's easy. So we're going to need to essentially what we're going to do is we're going to draw or we're going to create a text above each bar with the number that it is on our chart, with the number that it's associated with. So we're going to draw dot text, and then as you can see, we've got a bunch of parameters that we're going to have to fill in. So before we start doing that, we're going to create these parameters. So first, we need a tag, 
A tag is every time you draw something or plot something on the chart, it's going to have a specific ID. If you ever have an ID set for something, and then, so say you draw a line on the chart with a specific ID, and then you draw another line on a chart, but it has the same ID as the one before, that new one is going to replace the old drawing, and the old line that you drew is going to disappear. So if you want all of the things to stay, and to you don't want any of them to disappear, you have to give a unique ID for every single one that you draw. For me personally, I like to use um, a, uh, a variable that they have in here called current bar, which is just the current bar, uh, the number of the current bar, the ID of the current bar. It's a super easy one to use if you're going to have plots that go if you're going to have um, plots that go along as the chart moves. But if you're having multiple things plotted on within the span of one bar, then you're going to have to find your own method for doing that. But in this case, where our tag is going to be total bars, and then we're just going to add current bar. I, oh, we gotta put an equals here. I highly recommend making your tag something clear to understand, so that way when you go through and debug, it's a lot easier to know where your drawings are coming from or what, what is exactly being drawn. But we're gonna create another string. This is gonna be for the text itself that's gonna pop up. This is just gonna be the current bar, and then we're gonna set it to uh, we're going to turn it into a string. So it's just going to take the number of the bar itself and make it a string. Then we're going to do how many bars ago do we want to draw this? So this we're going to set to zero. And what that essentially means is as the plot moves along, the amount of bars ago it's going to draw it as is going to be the bar that it sets. So, so say we've got three bars on our chart. Say we're We've got these three bars on our chart, right? This one's going to be bar zero because this one it's still working on. So this isn't even a finished bar yet. And because we calculate on bar close, this one right here is going to be bar zero. Uh, as far as bars ago, it's zero bars ago, right? But this is going to be the third bar on our chart. So the current bar that this is, is three. I understand that's a, that can be a little confusing, but basically the number of bars ago is going left, it's going from right to left, and the current bar is going from left to right, if that makes sense. And then we're gonna set the, so next we're gonna set the Y value for, uh, for our chart. Now the Y value is gonna be a double because it's essentially gonna be a price. At what price point do you want this to sit? And we want this, this is how we're gonna access actual chart data from uh, from our from the charts that we put this indicator on right so every chart it has an array of or I guess a list of either low or high and then open and close in this case we want the high value of each bar and we want it to be zero bars ago you know to make this more dynamic we can do bars ago, right? So zero bars ago, uh, this bar, we want to plot this bar's value. So it's going to be the high of this bar right here is where we're going to plot it. But we want it to be just a tad higher than that. So we're going to add one, but we're going to multiply that by the tick size. So essentially, because when we're adding one, we're adding one uh, unit of price, right? And so if we're at 3,872, if we're going to add one, that's going to bring us all the way to 3,873. But I only really want to add a quarter of one, right? Or one tick worth. So in that case, I'm going to multiply it by the tick size, which is essentially 0 0.25, right? But if you want to be more dynamic, you can add, you can uh, type in the actual tick size. So now we have all of our parameters or almost all of them. The, a few of them we are going to put in here, but we're going to go back to draw text. Now we need an owner. The NinjaScript based owner is just going to be this. For the vast majority of things you do, you can just, 
it's going to be this. Um, then next we're going to have our tag. So we already have a tag, so we'll just do tag. We have text next, which is text. Bars a go. Well, we already have bars a go. And then our price, which is going to be Y. And then finally, we need the color, which is going to be this one is TB brush. And there you go. So now we have a totals bar, a total bars counter. So now we're going to do bars a go plot. It's going to be very similar, so we're just going to copy and paste all this. But there's going to be a couple things that we change. Obviously, we want the tags to be different because we don't want these to be disappearing as they're, we don't want these ones to be disappearing as these ones are plotting, right? It would just be a mess of things. So we're going to call this bars a go, but we're going to leave this. But we're not going to be plotting, we're not going to be plotting the current bar. So this text is going to be wrong, right? Because we're plotting the, the bars that go essentially. So I'm going to delete that for now. And I'll show you why in a second, but we'll leave that as is. And then our y value is going to change a little bit too. Because rather than being the high, we're going to do the low. So this is going to be plotted below the bar. Same thing of bars ago. And then instead of plus one, we're going to subtract one. Because we're going to be plotting right below each bar. All right, so why did I get rid of the text? Well, so for this one, the text is gonna be string text equals, and it's a little count, it's a little complicated, but just bear with me for a minute. So count, count is the total number of bars that are currently on the chart. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract current bar from that. And then we're going to subtract 2. And not 2 string. OK. So why did I do that? Because a lot of that seems unnecessary, right? So in order to get the get this thing to essentially count backwards, but we don't want to create a for loop that goes backwards, because that for loop is going to be initiated after every single bar that gets plotted. So that means you're going to have a for loop that goes all the way back through every single bar every time there's a new bar. And that just takes an extraordinary amount of time and computing power. It's quite shocking, really. And so you don't want to do it that way. You want to have it so that it's plotting just a single bar as it goes along. So that's why we're not doing a for loop that goes backwards. So instead, we're doing this method where it takes the total number of bars on the chart currently and we'll subtract the current bar from it. So for example, if we have, we have three bars on our chart, right? So our total bars is three, but the current bar is zero. So we're going to sub... So we have three bars on our chart and the current bar is three, right? So that means we're going to subtract the count from the current bar and we'll get, uh, and we'll get uh, zero. But then for the next one, if the count is three, but this current bar is two, well, this is going to pop up as one. And so this is going to, this way we'll be able to just go at, have it just plot on it as we go. And it's going to be much faster. So then why do we have this subtract two? Well, because the way that current bar and count um, add up the number of bars that are actually here is a little bit different. And you kind of need, you just need the negative minus two in order to adjust it a little bit. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So, uh, so that's the way that we have it. Now, a while ago, I said I was going to come back to the calculate dot on bar close. And that's because the user can choose when they want to calculate, right? Um, but that'll change the way that our uh, indicator here dynamically functions. So I want to make sure that I'm set up for the, for the user to change um, when the thing is when is the indicator is going to be calculated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go if calculate equals calculate dot on bar close. So as we have it set right now, I'm going to just take this and drag it into here. And 
And then from here, or you know what we'll do, I'll set string text here. And then we'll just leave it, we'll leave it as this. And then we'll have else, so uh, else if calculate equals calculate dot on each tick or calculate dot uh, calculate equals calculate dot on price change. And then in here, we'll do text equals count minus current bar minus one. And then dot to string. So it's exactly the same, but instead we subtract one. And that's because if you're calculating on each tick or on price change, it's going to count this bar as the most recent bar instead of this one. So you have to have the adjustment in there for one less bar or going back one less bar. And then we have text here. And we just have to do equals just a blank string. And there you go. So now we have our methods, but they still aren't going to do anything yet. So we'll go ahead and save. And that's because they aren't being called, right? So we want them to be called on each bar update. That is when the indicator will run, it'll run through all the information, it'll do its calculations on bar update. And our on bar update is currently on bar close. So in here, what we're going to do, and we also have our checks, which we haven't implemented yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if tb check. Then we'll call total bars plot. And we'll do if, because we set these to have different tags, and because we also set one to happen above the bars and one to happen below the bars, we can run them at the same time if we want to. So we'll do ba check. And we'll do bars ago plot. And then we should be set. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We'll compile it. And we'll run this indicator on our chart. So now I'll go ahead and open up the indicator now that it's compiled. We'll have to remove it and then go. We'll have to find it again. And I'll we'll run both at the same time so we can see. And we'll hit OK. And there you go. Oh, but you see there's an error here. Uh, I made the colors the same. This has to be. BA brush. We'll go ahead and save that again. And now it's compiled. We'll go indicators and we'll just double click and OK. And there you go. You're all set. But say you want to change the red color. Well, you guys know how to do that already. I don't need to show you. But you know, you can just come in and you can change it to whatever color you want. And there you go. Now we have our first indicator. Obviously, it's a little messy, but this this tool. The reason why I did this indicator specifically for this tutorial is because this is an incredibly useful tool when it comes to debugging, when you're writing your own code and stuff like that. So this is why I wanted you guys to, I wanted you all to follow this along so you could create this indicator for yourself. So this will be your first indicator that you've built maybe. And now you'll have this tool at your disposal for your own use cases. And I, I highly recommend taking advantage of it. And the reason why I say that is because when you get a bug in NinjaTrader, it's not going to tell you uh, like what line of code the error was. And sometimes it's tricky to know where it's actually where the code where the error is actually happening. But all it will tell you is that x number of bars ago. So it'll tell you like on bar like or on like 80 bars ago or on bar like 1000 there was an error and now you got to go through and find it. Well, you don't know where bar 1000 is, right? Just by default. But now, because of this indicator, you do. You can go through, you can go all the way back until you see bar 1000 right there. And you can figure out where the error actually occurred. So, highly recommend using this.
when it comes to uh, building your own indicators. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for following al along. Um, I hope this piqued your interest in some way because programming in the market is a, one, it's just a super fun way to kind of just play with the data and stuff like that. But this is the start of you being able to automate your own ideas and create your own ideas for the market. So if you have an idea for an indicator that you've wanted to build for a while, you know, this is how you do it. And so keep following along if you're interested. We're, the next video will dive deeper into some of these concepts. We'll be a little bit more specific, maybe do some more advanced calculations. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you found this useful. In the description of this video, there will be a link to our website with a bunch of, we'll, I'll link it to our code repository so you can check out a bunch of the code that we write for NinjaTrader. It's all completely free and open source and you can feel free to use it as you see fit and play around with it. I highly recommend checking that out. There will also be a link to our website. As of right now, we're running a, a not for very much longer, but we are running a holiday special for the December and January months um, if you can purchase any of our pretty much any of our indicators for 20% off um, or the alpha package for a, a, a pretty hefty discount as well so if you're interested I recommend checking that out uh, and if you have any questions or thoughts please feel free to comment down below I'll be going through them and answering all the questions you all have uh, and then if you have anything else you'd like to message us about about feel free to email us at info at have a wonderful day, and as always, good fortunes.